It's a 14 by six enclosed V-nose cargo trailer. That's, that's 14 feet from the rear to the actual nose of the trailer, which is not gonna be, well, I'm gonna utilize that area for the water, for the water tank. So. It's, uh, this trailer has extra height. It's, uh, I believe, seven, seven feet tall interior. Single axle. There's not going to be a huge water tank on board, so I don't have to worry about weight. It's going to be really lightweight. Everything is pretty much lightweight. Uh, this wasn't the original trailer that I ordered. I ordered a trailer. I went to go pick it up, and the salesman never, uh, never uh, put the, he didn't put the order in correctly. So it's supposed to be extra height on the trailer I ordered. It was around six feet tall. You know, I walked in the trailer, let them know this isn't going to work. You know, they had this on a lot, and uh, I just went ahead and got this. So this is the vinyl coin flooring you get from Home Depot. I don't think Lowe's carry it. It carries it. It's 12 feet. This is 12 by uh, 12 by 10.
So what I'm doing here is is completing the back wall that's going to be on the uh, the end of the shower. It's going to conceal the fresh water tank. One thing I did with this build, which I I didn't pay attention to until a later video, is uh, I'm leveling all the walls. You know, I'm, I'm 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 trying to keep the walls level using a level, and I shouldn't do that because the trailer itself is not level. I should have um, just used measurements from the uh, the side walls from from front to rear, side to side. But I, I caught it in time. I think in a later video when I started to install the uh, exterior sink is when that kind of came to a realization that uh, I got to stop. I got to stop measuring everything uh, with a level and just measure from the edges and ends of the trailer. So I'm, I'm going to wrap up this end wall and then uh, in install the water tank behind the wall. I'm not plumbing the water tank in this video, but uh, this, this back wall is here just so I can get the, um, the placement of the shower pan uh, correct. And that's going to come up in a minute. measure the distance for the, the back wall. I'm going to build up a two by two back wall behind the shower pan so that I can run the PEX water lines against the wall.
Now I'm trying to get the placement for the toilet drain. I need to place the 14 gallon black tank underneath the trailer and, and make sure it lines up uh, with, the, with the toilet uh, from, from front to back. So there's, there's limited space at this part, this point in the trailer, it starts to, um, the frame underneath starts to come to a point. It's, it starts to go towards the, the V nose of the trailer. So I'm, I'm just trying to get the position of the toilet inside uh, the trailer, the position from the side and the back wall. So once I go underneath the trailer, I can, I can make sure it lines up with where I need to place the black tank. Uh, that way uh, I have a proper drainage and I also have space to properly vent the black, the black tank. So I'm gonna go underneath here and, and, and try to show you guys. So this is the black tank, it's a, it's a 14 gallon RV black tank. Uh, I'm gonna try to fit it in this, this space here. This is, this is just where the trailer starts to, you, you can see the two angle pieces on the side, it starts to go towards the Vino. So it's not like the other, the other ribs of the trailer where it's straight all the way across. So uh, there's, there's limited space, but this, this particular, this tank is, is it's short. It's uh, eight inches tall at the highest point, and I believe at four inches at the at the end. Um, so towards the end here, at the back side is where I'm going to put a half inch or a one and a half inch um, RV uh, vent for the black tank. But as far as the on the other end of the tank, where you can't see is the actual drain for the black tank. It's the it's the RV style. I think it's three or four inch opening, and I'm, I'm going to try to use the uh, jack here in a minute to go ahead and prop this tank up and see if I can get the placement correct so I can drill the uh, I believe four, four and a quarter inch hole into the black tank. I, I initially bought the wrong drill. I think I bought a, a four and an eighth inch drill bit or, or it was four and a quarter but I really need to like uh, need a, a bit bigger than that. So I you know later on when I drill the hole for the black tank I have to come behind it with a jigsaw and, and increase the opening a bit because the, the flange, the actual, the main part of the flange is, is only uh, around four inches, but there's a, um, there's a beveled lip on the flange that, that comes out maybe another quarter inch. So I had to use the jigsaw so, so the flange can sit flush on the floor. And you'll see that shortly. It's, it's kind of hard here um, propping this tank up with this, this jack, but it, I got it working. So it's in place. And I'm um, just making sure the toilet is where it needs to be and proximity to the tank underneath. And it, 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 it worked out perfectly because I, I initially had the toilet and, and it's another part of the RV. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> another part of the trailer. And I later realized that where the toilet was, it was right over the axle. And while I could have drained, well, I, I could have put a drain there and then ran to the black tank, but it's, it would have been too low. And you want that black tank right underneath the toilet. so. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to measure the flange and, and make sure that I have the flange sitting spaced properly from, from front to back on the, on the floor of the trailer. Then I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole and um, put the toilet plaque back in place, make sure everything's working out. All right. Take a quick look down in the black tank, show you the hole. Uh, it would have been nice if I had the right size hole saw, so I would have just had this clean cut, but I gotta come back with a jigsaw.
So I'm using stainless steel screws here to screw this flange down. And I screw everything down and, and then realize I, I forgot to put the toilet anchor bolts on and, and have to unscrew everything to slide them back underneath there. But um, everything seemed, everything worked out okay. The, I sealed the vinyl down underneath the flange. I, I put some silicone underneath the flange and uh, with the stainless steel screws, I think everything's good. The toilet fits, uh, fits nicely. It's in a good place, so we're good to go. So I'm again leveling these walls and I, and I shouldn't. I come back and uh, use the measuring tape and, and make sure that the walls themselves around the shower are square. It, it was off a little bit, uh, I think maybe like an eighth of an inch. So, but I mean, once, you know, it, it, it looks decent as I go further into this project. Um, I'm putting a brace here in the ceiling just so I have something to screw this in wall into. And I, I should have did that more. I should have put that a, a, a beam all the way across the ceiling, um, especially in the end wall where the water tank is. Because uh, later on, when I start the, install the FRP on the ceiling, I kind of realized that that end wall should have sat below the ceiling, the uh, ceiling beam, the the iron beam that's that's built into the trailer. That way, I was able to I'm, I'm able to slide that FRP on top of the stud wall and drill into the the ceiling beam that's behind that front wall, but it, it, it worked out, but uh, it was it was oversight. So, um, you know, I, I didn't really uh, sketch things out. You know, here you can see this in wall. And uh, originally the tr the toilet was sitting right on the the left side of that, that wall, left to where I'm, I'm facing. And that was right over the axle. And so the black tape wouldn't fit there. But I like where the toilet is now, because uh, as, as we go further into the video, I changed the design of the toilet. Uh, originally, that, that space where the toilet was going to go, I, I initially said, okay, I'll just have this, this open space here and I'll just put a bench. I'll put uh, a, little, um, a little shelf. Uh, that way, you know, people that are using the shelf, can, uh, the trailer can place their items down, you know, put their bags down and so forth. But the new design, there's still room for people to place their bags, hang their items up while they're, while they're taking a shower. So all in all, the new design is, is okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and build the two stud walls for the, the hand wash sink area. Uh, that's, that's coming up next.
So this stud wall is for the hand wash sink to sit on. There's also a pretty heavy mirror that's gonna sit on the wall. I still have the bracket for it. It's a commercial style mirror. I mean, that thing weighs about 30 pounds, um, but uh, it actually fell down, it broke. <laughs> I threw it away. Uh, I ordered another one on Amazon, but uh, this wall, I'm gonna have to put several braces in, in the wall, any uh, horizontal braces for the, for the sink to sit and also for the mirror to be placed. So this is one of the braces for the mirror. This this top brace, the second one down is for the bottom of the brace. It's the brace is shaped like an uppercase I. The the very last brace on the bottom is for the hand wash sink. Uh, it, the hand wash sink, which is right here, it comes with a little bracket that allows the hand wash sink to just slide right down and sit on it, and it, and it holds the hand wash sink in place. This is the vent pipe for the plumbing. It's going to fit right there between the wall. Once it's all done, go out the ceiling, and there'll be a cap on the um, on the pipe in the ceiling. Right, right here is the Max Air uh, vent for the ceiling. It's an RV style vent. I actually have the same one in, in, in my RV and I, and I like it. I have two other vents and out of, out of them all, there's three vents that, I, that I've used. This one is in the bathroom in my RV and it works well. It has three, four speeds, I believe. And it, uh, it works really well. It's quiet too. So I think it's the, the Max X. Uh, I can post a model number in, in the description later but I'm taking measurements along the side so I can go ahead and frame it out here with the uh, two by twos I'm going to frame it out beforehand then take that frame and go ahead and screw it into the ceiling I'm just making sure I get the orientation of the fan correct it needs to sit with the opening opening up towards the rear of the trailer so if it's open as you're driving the wind isn't trying to tear off the uh, the, the cover of the of the vent so I'm going to frame this out around the fan um, initially, so a little little advice, I, I framed this out, but later on, you know, realized I should have left, still should have left maybe a, maybe a, a eighth inch, quarter inch gap around the sides because once I install it later on, the, the fit is real snug. I had to come back in and take the jigsaw and, and try to cut some of the beam and some of the, the sheet metal on the ceiling down a bit so I can squeeze that fan in. It still was a very 
tight fit, but I, I got it in. But um, so this, I, I would suggest doing this method. Just leave a little gap instead of trying to measure everything out, put it in the ceiling and screw it all. If I would have tried to screw all this up in the ceiling above my head, it would have been a pain. So getting this done ahead of time before I actually try to place it in the ceiling of the trailer, it, it saved some time. tape I don't have any so while I run before I run to the hardware store I'm gonna go ahead and run the water inlet for this toilet this this blue line going this blue uh, PEX tube right here in the wall currently that's gonna be the reserve um, it's gonna be for the reserve tank so that's gonna be the water supply to the pump uh, the pumps only gonna be used if I'm using the reserve tank otherwise city water and city border pressure is going to be used.
this through. All right, so this is the water outlet from the tank. This is gonna be a fresh water inlet, so I'm gonna throw an elbow on that, and run some pecs down to the toilet. It's going to run straight through the wall. Later on, I'll get a PEX to half inch, uh, PEX half inch uh, female adapter to the PEX, uh, uh, what is this called? I forgot what the, uh, the little, eh, anyway, I'll get the proper adapter to run this PEX line over to this, to the back of this toilet.
this is what I was referring to earlier about the back wall, back stud wall, not sitting underneath the ceiling beam. So I, I made it, I made the back wall high so that it would sit on the face of the ceiling beam so I can screw into it. But I should have sat it below the ceiling beam. That way this FRP here, I, I could have slid it over the stud wall and underneath the back beam and screwed it right into this, the, ceiling, uh, the ceiling beam. I didn't do that. Uh, I don't know if you can see it too well in the video, but I, I actually have a brace holding up the end of the wall. Later on, the end wall, the end, there'll be an eighth inch plywood in the FRP on the end wall. And the fitting on the, um, the trim that's going to sit on the, the FRP on the end wall, it'll end up holding up the ceiling. So I'll probably use a little glue and then just have that end wall fitting hold up the ceiling. So it should be fine. But right now, I have this, this brace in place, and I come back later on and put a, a aluminum L channel there to uh, secure it. Uh, I'm going to start insulating some of the, the, the storage area ceiling. Uh, I think I just do this row. I still have to come back later on and complete it. That's just so I can get the ceiling prepared to finish the FRP right below where the ceiling vent's going to go. So I came back later on. Initially, I screwed the FRP on the ceiling with hex bolts. They were self-tapping hex bolts. That was just to hold the FRP in place that I didn't have the proper screws. I come back with some, uh, they're like uh, lathing screws, the type of screws you use for chicken wire, but they're self-tapping. And they'll, they'll hold the FRP up there they're better. So I, I was drilling right into the metal stud um, beam that's in the ceiling. And I'll come back later on and, and use some white paint to cover up the screw head so you won't notice them. Uh, right here, I'm trying to fit the FRP trim, the trim that goes in between the uh, two pieces of FRP and um, where it's it's meeting. The two pieces are going to meet right here on this ceiling beam. Uh, one side of the FRP is going to be screwed in, but that will be enough to hold up the other edge of the ceiling FRP that's going to go right uh, on top of the, the ceiling vent. So uh, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a nice tight fit here. Once I fit the other piece of FRP, it's a little rough getting them to, to butt up together, but it, it ended up working out.
So I'm going to wrap up this video in a minute. Just finishing off the, the screws into the FRP here. Um, into the into the studs that I put into the ceiling and around the, the vent opening. Uh, the next video I'm going to install the, the, the exhaust vent and go ahead and test it. I have a, uh, I have a 110 to DC converter that I'll use to test that vent. And I'll show that in the next video along with uh, I think some plumbing as well. So thanks for watching and tune in for the next video. Thanks.